Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. We'll grab some sunscreen, grab your passports, and grab a little spinning cash, because in today's video, we are taking a trip <laughs> to the Dynamic Island. Yes, the Dynamic Island for Android. This is a viewer request video from Jay Almond. JJ, sorry it took a while to get this done. I wanted to spend a few days with it before I uh, came to conclusions, and I do have some thoughts on this for sure. All right, so this is developed by a small dev team called Jewano. And they have quite a few little apps out there for Samsung devices, such as Notification Light, Power Button Remapper, Floatify Lock Screen. So they've been around for a while. And I think it's pretty awesome that they came out with this like four days after the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max were released. I mean, Apple's been working on this for quite some time. And granted, on the iPhone, it is much more polished than this, for sure, for sure, no doubt about that. But it is still impressive that a small team of developers, I think it's just a couple people, we're able to get this out in just four days flat. That is absolutely amazing. So what is this dynamic island right here? Well, as you can see here, it's this floating little notification bar that is persistent when you're running media and playing music, and it shows your notifications for about 10 seconds when they come in. So it's just a nice little way to see notifications as they come in, as opposed to, you know, counting on your notification bar here or counting on your brief pop-ups or your edge lighting it's just another option here on the android side of things or at least for samsung devices um, so let's go ahead and talk about getting this installed i'll walk you through how it looks and how you can use it and stuff and then uh, we'll go over the pros and cons and whether or not i recommend this especially on the z fold 4 there's a uh, there's one problem with it on the fold 4 we'll go over it just a little bit so you're going to find this in the play store just open it up and you're going to want to look for a dynamic spot all right, let's go ahead and find that real quick. Go back to the Play Store. That's one thing I don't like about it. I didn't notice that when I was clicking in there, but it is blocking the search bar. It's kind of a pain there. So there's Dynamic Spot. Cool, so I've already got it installed. That's what it's gonna look like, all right? There's also a paid upgrade that you can do within the app to unlock some more features. I didn't do it because there's one little pitfall with this app. It's not ready for the Fold 4 is what I'm getting at. So uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. But let's go ahead and open it up so we can look at the settings. The install is really simple. It just asks you for a couple permissions. And then it asks you to pick which apps you want to get notifications for. So let's go ahead and walk through this real quick. I'm going to pick up the Fold 4. We'll look at notifications. So you'll be able to pick your apps. So the first thing here, one thing I definitely recommend you do if you're going to get this, is I recommend going through all of your different apps and deselecting all the ones that have too many notifications because this thing will get annoying. I mean, seriously annoying. You will get notifications left and right from all these apps. So you, you definitely do wanna take the time to limit the notifications because it will start to drive you nuts. All right, let's get out of here. So we have a little bit of a battery notification we could set up here when the phone is charging. And these other two modes here for when it's fully charged and below 15% are for the paid version. All right, we'll back out of here. And then we have our screen off notifications that we can turn on. Now let's go back out of here. Let's go to the pop-up settings. So here is where we can express our dimensions. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so you can see what I picked. And the reason these values are kind of important is because when you first install the application, it's gonna be a little tiny dynamic island, more like a dynamic spot that's right up here in the top of your notification panel. And it just kind of looks weird and it starts blocking up notifications if it's left there. So if you want it to look a little bit like mine, just grab these settings here and plug them in after you have it set up. Swipe to clear. Yes, this is a big one right here. So I believe by default this was disabled. You definitely want to enable this. And the reason being is because I've had like three or four notifications that have popped up. One was from Samsung. And I'd go into it, and, I, and I'll show you this in a little bit when we launch it. But I'd go into the notification and it would show that it had some media playing. And it was one of those little pop-up ads, you know, that go in the corner of the screen. And I would stop it and all this, and I would close out of the Samsung notification, all this stuff. This notification thing would not go away at all. And the only saving grace is to enable this swipe to clear so you can swipe it away. I'll show it to you guys in just a little bit. We have our auto hide time here. And um, when touching outside, that means when it pops up right here, you can get it to go away by touching outside of the screen. So we'll go over that in just a little bit. Unfortunately, it disables the uh, dynamic island, like I have the uh, music player running, but once you open up the settings, it makes it go away. Um, we have appearance, so we can use images from contacts, use our app icons, and we can use small notification icons. 
We have a couple controls for music visualizations and the music controls for playing music. If you opt for the premium version, $4.99. Allow two pop-ups. This will allow multiple notifications to pop up on your screen as opposed to just one, which will always be your most recent one. Let's see if there's anything else that's worth talking about. Nope, not really. So that's all the settings. So let's see this in action real quick. So I've got some music playing in the background, right? So it's gonna leave, it's gonna leave a persistent notification up while the music is playing which is kind of cool because we can press and hold this and we can fast forward tracks, rewind them and pause them. And you'll see it takes up a nice portion of the fold for screen. That looks really nice. Um, and as your other notifications come in, you can just touch them and that'll open up the app that you're in. Or if it's music like this and stuff, you just press and hold and you'll have your media controls. Uh, just like if you're streaming to a TV set or something like that, that's pretty awesome. You know, I actually like that a lot. So this is just a nice way for you to just interact with your currently playing media, interact with your notifications. So let's go over some pros and some cons of this real quick. I do have a list of them, hold on here. So the pros in my opinion is it's a very nice way for you to quickly see your notifications and it's a very nice way for you to control your music controls. Um, and other pros include, uh, let's move on to the cons. All right, so for the cons, so the first con is it takes up precious screen real estate. I am not a big fan of something that's taken up screen space if it doesn't need to be there. And it doesn't need to be there. When my music's playing, when I have notifications come in, I much prefer the brief pop-ups that come in from Samsung. I also prefer the edge lighting. I basically prefer anything over this for that reason, for that screen real estate issue. Um, sometimes this thing doesn't go away as well. Let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can reproduce this real quick. So if I go here and I stop my music from playing, right? And I go ahead and swipe the music player away. Let's do that. If I go back here, let's minimize that. Let's make sure it's gone. And it's still just gonna stay there. So what I have to do is go here, go to recent apps, click it away. Now it should go away. So it kind of has some awkward behavior with the music player. And this happens quite a bit too. You'll notice even when you clear it from recent apps, sometimes it just won't go away. And that's what I was referring to in the settings to have that swipe gesture enabled. Let me show you that in action real quick. So if I open up Spotify real quick, let's open that back up. Let's play some stuff. And let's just say we got a notification that we cannot get rid of. The way you're gonna do that is you'll press and hold this. All right. And then once it's like this, swipe it to the side. There you go. Not the smoothest animation either. I will say that, not my favorite part. All right, I've got the music playing again. We've got the uh, dynamic island here. Um, the other thing that I don't like about it, especially here on the Z Fold 4, and I'm sure it's not like this on other Android devices, is if we close this up and we go back to our front outer cover screen, watch this when I press and hold this. And I'm sorry if you guys see some reflections. I've got uh, more lights on than usual. I forgot to turn a couple of them off. I press and hold this, look at that it expands across the whole screen. I think what it's doing is it's remembering the size of the inner display screen and it's applying that size here. And I've played with all the settings. It doesn't matter if you actually change a spot size because you can make it bigger, smaller, wider. That doesn't matter at all. This, this pop-up that it does is always gonna be the same size. And it just goes like a couple inches to each side on the Z Fold 4. It looks pretty hilarious. Look at that again, look at that. You still have your controls here, but look at the Texas cutoff here. It's pretty wonky. They have some work to do on this. Um, the other negative, and this is probably like, mm, it's just been a big gripe of mine since it came out on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And that is, is by default, this is set to be up here where our selfie camera is. And that's where it is on the iPhone as well, except on the iPhone, the camera's down lower. So I have the dynamic island, you know, more representative to where it would be on an iPhone. And the whole deal is, is that this is an interactive notification panel. But at the same time, it's also, uh, it's like putting flowers around your selfie camera. They're like beautifying the selfie camera. And I am not a big fan of touching my finger all over my camera lens all the time. So if I were to put this dynamic island up there to where it is by default, I would be pressing on my selfie camera all the time. It's something I really don't like about it. I'm not a fan of it on the iPhone as well, as far as that implementation goes, because you're being encouraged to put your fingers all over your selfie cam. Because remember, on the iPhone, the dynamic island is your selfie cam and face ID. It wraps right around it. So all day long, you are sitting there and touching on that dynamic island slash selfie cam slash face ID. 
That's almost like Samsung releasing a new feature and saying, hey, we have new music controls. You just need to go back here and start touching your camera lenses and touch the next one, it'll do this. And I know I'm being a little extra, but if you think about it on the surface, that's what's being asked of you. You're being asked and encouraged to touch your selfie cam repeatedly. I'm not a big fan of that. And I know it probably doesn't mess up the photos much. I'm sure it doesn't interfere with Face ID much, but the whole principle of that, of actually touching right where your selfie cam is. I'm shooting this with a Canon M50 and all over in the manual it says, do not touch your lenses. Keep your fingers away from the lenses. So I am just completely trained and tuned in to not touching my camera lenses. They get a wipe down with a lens cleaning cloth. And when I clean my screens on here, I use a nice cleaning cloth for my phones. I'm not sitting here touching my camera all the time like this. Uh, it just doesn't sit well with me personally. So I'm not a big fan of that. I'm definitely not a big fan of this right here. That's, that's pretty darn hilarious. I mean, you gotta be honest, it looks kind of silly here. Um, whether or not you like it, hey, that's up to you. You know, no hate from this guy here. Whatever you wanna choose. But for me, as to whether or not I like it, well, I'll sum it up with this. Swipe up, we're gonna search for a dynamic spot. There it is. Press and hold. And there's this little option called uninstall. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Click OK. That's my thoughts on the Dynamic Island, at least for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Results may vary on other devices, but on the Fold 4, it's a no-go for me. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching.